Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer for this March 30th, 2020. Let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your grace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Son of Righteousness will arise with healing in His wings. O come, let us worship and praise. Our psalm is Psalm 6. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me in your wrath. Have pity on me, Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, Lord, for my bones quake in fear and terror. My spirit quakes in awful terror. How long, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, and deliver me. Save me for the sake of your steadfast love. For in death no one remembers you, and who will give you thanks in the grave? I grow weary because of my groaning. Every night I drench my pillow and flood my bed with tears. My eyes are wasted with grief and worn away because of all my enemies. Depart from me, all evildoers, for the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies shall be confounded and quake with fear. They shall turn back and suddenly be put to shame. Let us pray. Lord God, you love mercy and tenderness. You give life and overcome death. Look upon the many wounds of your church, restored to health by your risen Son, so that it may sing a new song in your praise. Amen. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. For I did not know I was like an innocent lamb led to the sacrifice. They plotted an evil device against me, saying, Come, let us put wood in his bread, and destroy him root and branch from the land of the living, so his name might not be remembered any longer. But, O Lord, you who judge righteously, who tests minds and hearts, let me see your vengeance on them, for I have revealed my righteous plea to you. And a reading from Romans. But God demonstrates his own love towards us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. A reading from the 15th and 16th century John uh, Bishop and Martyr John Fisher. This is from a commentary on the Psalms. Our high priest is Christ Jesus. Our sacrifice is his precious body, which he immolated on the altar of the cross for the salvation of all people. The blood that was poured out for our redemption was not that of goats or calves, as in the old law, but that of the most innocent lamb, Christ Jesus, our Savior. The temple in which our high priest offered sacrifice was not one made by hands, but built by the power of God alone. For he shed his blood in the sight of the world, a temple fashioned by the hand of God alone. This temple, however, has two parts. The first is the earth, which we now inhabit. The second is as yet unknown to us mortals. Christ first offered sacrifice here on earth, when he underwent his most bitter death. Then, clothed in the new garment of immortality, with his own blood he entered into the Holy of Holies, that is, into heaven. There he also displayed before the throne of the Heavenly Father that blood of immeasurable price, which he had poured out seven times on behalf of all people subject to sin. This sacrifice is so pleasing and acceptable to God 
that as soon as he has seen it, he must immediately have pity on us and extend clemency to all who are truly repentant. Moreover, it is eternal. It is offered not only each year as with the Jews, but also each day for our consolation, and indeed at every hour and moment as well, so that we may have the strongest reason for comfort. That is why the Apostle adds, he has secured an eternal redemption. All who have embarked on true contrition and penance for, for the sins they have committed and are firmly resolved not to commit sins again for the future, but to persevere constantly in that pursuit of virtues which they have now begun, all these become sharers in this holy and eternal sacrifice. St. John sets this before us in these words, My little children, I am writing this to you so that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One, and He is the propitiation for our sins, and not only for our sins, but also for those of the whole world. St. Paul said, If we, if when we were enemies, of God, we were reconciled to God by the death of Jesus, we can even more sure know that we shall be saved by the life of his Son. We were enemies of God when Jesus died for us. And now we are children of God. And though we sin, as we were reminded by, um, by the, the, the teacher and preacher, John Fisher, we remember that God continues to love us and forgive us. Every day, we try our best, but every day we fall short. We, uh, we though, are children of God, and just as children are corrected by parents, God corrects us and, sets, and forgives us and sets us on our way. A good message for the morning as, as we begin our day. Let us continue with the Gospel Canticle. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Through your holy prophet, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forbearers, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our Father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. 
in the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation, for the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, for the gifts of relationship with others, for the communion of faith in your church. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world, for the people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare, for all who work for peace and international harmony, for all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, for the Church of Jesus Christ in every land. Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. In all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We'll see you tonight for evening prayer.